Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we have five examples of the WHERE clause of the link statement. Please consider subscribing. It will truly show your support for my channel. Before we begin, you have to include these three usings for this examples to work. And we're gonna keep it very short so you can recreate this on your home computer. So here, I'm gonna do an example one for the WHERE clause. So here, I have a set of words, and those words are gonna populate this data structure here. And they look like this right here. I use this data on a website, not a website, but an app I wrote for the Windows Store. Notice here, you have the English word, and then you have the Spanish for Latin America, and Spanish for uh, Spain. So this is my data, this is my input. Now in my program, I'm gonna go build the entire list and then I'm gonna search that entire list of 4,000 some odd words just where CID equals eight. Just where this CID equals eight, right? No more, no more, no less. So where it's eight, I'm gonna get it. Notice below it's seven and after is 10. At the very bottom, the numbers just keep growing. So it looks like I have 315 different categories that I could use. So we're gonna get category eight. And then after I build this list, I'm gonna loop over it using the for each statement and I'm gonna display that to the screen. Let's work this out. Notice I'm gonna hit F11 to step into this code. I'm gonna go get all the words and those words, 4,658 of them. Now I'm gonna go out and do that link statement. And notice that I'm using a variable called word, and I say word lambda word dot field name. Now I could have used whatever I want. I could have said here P. It just doesn't matter what you use, as long as you're consistent with that same word, so it works everywhere. So notice here, the statement has changed something and the word was a little bit more legible, but you can use anything that you want. Let's uh, step through this. Notice I have my words, F10, and now I'm gonna step through there. And I'm gonna step through there a couple times and we will go look at the output. And notice the output goes to the string where it's word ID one, English and Spanish. And you can see how I'm building that with the string.format command. Notice the percent zero, percent one, percent two are placeholders for my fields. Notice this is zero, one, and two. And you can put these in any order that you wish. And you can even repeat. I could come over here and say zero. So string.format is very, very powerful. So I'm just gonna stay inside of this loop, print it, and then I can hit F5 to just run it. And notice my output went out and got all 32 words. And that is example one. Example two is the same as our first example, except one thing. Here, we're sending in an input parameter. And notice that we're using the input parameter in the where clause of our link statement. So notice I'll be sending in eight into this variable then that variable is used here. And pretty much it's the same program. Let's go ahead and execute this. And I will show you the output. And notice the output got me the 32 words that we already know we were gonna get. And that is the second example. In example three, you'll notice that each link statement is getting a little bit more complex each time. Notice here, I'm gonna call example three with eight, our category ID, and then zero, which will represent odd or even. So notice that I will come in here to my where clause and I will get that group number. And then I'll say, and that, that word ID mod two, the modulus, the remainder is either zero or one, odd or even. And notice I'm gonna be looking for the even ones. Let's execute this. And notice 246 to 32, it received the even words. 
And that's how you do it. In example four, notice that we only have one int parameter, the word group number. And then I'm going to come in there and say, hey, category ID, you're equal to that word group number, number eight. And then notice here I'm doing an order by descending. So that will mean Z to A. And then I'm introducing a new one is like then by. So this is like adding more than one column. And you can keep this then by going and then by descending as necessary. Let's run this and see how this works. Let's take a look at the output. And what did we sort by? We sorted by the English word. So notice that it went from Z to A. So descending. There you have it. In our final example, it gets a little bit more complicated. This is going to be our dynamic one. Notice that I'm still sending in 8 as our word group number. But notice now I've introduced a new line that says, hey, out of all of the columns, I only want these two columns. Now this object does not exist. The two column object does not exist. That's why I'm saying this is dynamic. And then what's going to happen is I'm just going to return these numbers and only two columns exist. And then I'm going to return it to this statement right here. And what we can do here is we can drop in a little loop that will print those. And what they will do is we'll say uh, var simple set equals that example. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. And you can see that dynamicness of just going out and saying new and then uh, assigning our fields. Notice you got the open curly, the close curly inside of the select. If you want more columns, you just keep putting commas there. And notice that I did an order by descending on the English word. Let's execute this. And notice that we were able to go out there and get the data. Now, we have to dive into this a little bit just so you can see what's going on. So when I execute this, we're going to break into a couple lines here. Let's execute this. Run. F11 to step in. And when I get my data, my numbers, the results, notice that I have a new set. This object does not exist anywhere. So when I return this, it's going to be returned to this variable, simple set. Simple set will be looking like the same. And notice there is no object here, no object name. It's dynamic. And now what happens is when I come through this for each, notice that I'm assigning one row at a time to C. And that C is just one instance. And then I can reference that by C.EN and C.ESL. Very good. F5 to continue. And we're all done. Thank you for sharing your time watching this video. Please consider subscribing, leaving a small comment, and giving a thumbs up. I would truly appreciate that.